bomb, getting smoke, dicks and I'm spitting fast. Now let's hit some heated topics, yes, it's time for group chat. Smoke, you know what time it is. It's group chat time. Smoke and I are going to let you in our weekly group chat on what we discuss on some of the topics of college football. It's going to be a wild one today. Smoke, <laughs> our first topic is what? Why Georgia won't dominate in the SEC this season? Reed, I'm, listen, just, just take a deep breath. And just walk with me. I know you're going to say, is your name Smoke or Smoking What You Do? But let me just get into it first. I do believe George is a very good team, right? But there's a lot that's going on right now that we have to unpack the unfiltered version of what we got going on and why they won't dominate the SEC. Just walk with me. First of all, let's talk about the schedule. That part, when you start at December, I mean, September the 28th at Alabama, and you start walking it through, you got Bama. That's going to be a physical game that you're going to have to go into Bryant Denny and play a team that beat you last year, the only one that beat you for the SEC championship. Then you go into a rival between the edges, Auburn. Might be a cakewalk, but it's not a cakewalk after you just finish coming through a physical game. Then you go into a trap of Mississippi State. You should come out of that. But you got to look ahead and say, I got to go down to Texas and play on, on October 19th. Tough game. Then you got the cocktail party. Brutal as well. Then you come again and you go to Oxford and you play against Ole Miss, maybe the best team in the SEC right now. But you're playing against Ole Miss and Tennessee. Those two teams play at a different pace. They play sped up football. So in that part of your schedule where it's the toughest, you're going to have to go in there and play physical ball, focus football week after week after week. It can take a toll on you and just beat you up to the end of the season. Now, the SEC flipped on them, Reed. It's not that they're playing in the cakewalk SEC East, and I said it, cakewalk SEC East. If you're an SEC guy, you know the best rest in the West. Typically, when you play in the East, you can walk through and you got that one game where you play, if Tennessee pushes their head up, a tough Tennessee team, or a Florida. Other than that, you're rolling through there. So not only is that middle part of your schedule tough as heck, physical, and really good teams, and the best teams at the end, back-to-back -back weeks, you have no weekends off, and you got to get ready for playoff football. I Smoke. think they make the playoffs, but I don't know if they go to the SEC championship. Talk Smoke. to me. <clears throat> Cut it out. Cut it out. I think it's important, right? Your real name is Gerald Dixon. They call you Smoke, and they call you Smoke because everybody says that you were amazingly fast when you used to play at Alabama when you played in the league, but sometimes I wonder do they call you smoke because you actually smoke, right? Now, I want the fans and the producers to zoom in on the helmet that's over your right shoulder. We know where your loyalty lies. You're an Alabama guy through and through, and you got upset with Coach Saban this week because he didn't pick Bama to be in the SEC championship game. Georgia has dominated the SEC the last couple of years. I think they were – undefeated up until they lost to Bama in a really good game towards the end of the season. But for you to say that they're not going to be dominant in the SEC, I don't understand it. Besides scheduling smoke, what else would make you believe that? Well, Carl, off-field incidents. You've had 25 off-field incidents from the, from the incident, that the fatal crash that killed one of their teammates and one of the staffers. And on top of that, you have Monday. Bo and Travis ATN, the guy just came over, had the DUI reckless driving charges. This is recent. This is the last few months. You and I both know, and I'm going to touch on you real quick. You've been a head coach, and you understanding the importance of focusing on the task at hand, and that's winning. The hardest thing to do is win, is beat yourself, and then go ahead and play against a team that wants to beat you. You can't win two games in one week and playing against yourself. You aren't focusing on the task at hand. You're not planning, game planning properly. You're planning policies of keeping your young guys in. So my question to you, Carl Reed, when you were the head coach and you had really, really good teams and you had off the field incidents that you had to sit your team down week to week to week to talk to them about the same exact thing, how much of that took away from your focus on 
winning the game at hand. That means beating the other team, not beating yourself. When you have an incident where a player gets in trouble, especially when they get in big trouble, a lot of people say, well, it, it makes the team, it hurts the team in terms of preparation. That's actually not true. When you have an incident where a player gets in trouble, there's two people that can't lose focus. That's the head football coach and the player who's actually affected by the incident. Because those are the two people who workload becomes bigger. You have to meet with administration. You might have to meet with police. You have to also deal with the public scrutiny that comes from fans, that comes from other faculty members, that comes from locals who feel like maybe the kid should be suspended. Maybe you don't have control over your players the way that you think. But if you have an iron mind, and a strong will, and you can stay connected to what's really important. The team itself is not affected by it. The team, it becomes a safe haven for you to release some of the stress that you're dealing with when you're at practice, when you're in the film room. So in terms of it affecting the team, I've never really bought into that, but you do have to make sure the player that is affected in the incident and the head coach smoke keeps their mind clear. Well, Carl, I'm glad you said play your because it hasn't been player, it's been players. It's been 25 incidents. So this is a reoccurring in thing that happens at the University of Georgia. Now you're playing the best of the best. You're not, like I said, you're not playing that Cupcake East anymore. You're playing the best of the best in the SEC. You got Texas, Ole Miss, Bama, in that that one stretch. And you're telling me Kirby just said it. I I have spoken to the team 162 times about what's going on. It has nothing to do with us playing within those white lines. Some of your focus has gone away. I've been on really good teams, Carl. The 2000 team of, at Bama, when we were supposed to go back and win the SEC championship, we didn't because we had off-the-field incident, incidents that took us away from the focus and the plan at hand of playing football and winning the game between the lines. See, Reed, I'm going to touch on the next thing. All right. And it's my third and last thing I'm going to say about why I don't believe they're going to walk through the SEC and dominate like everybody thinks, the loss of production on offense. When you talk about the production on offense, you lost your leading rusher. You lost Ladd McConkley. You lose Brock Bowers. You lose Mim. And I'm not going to touch on the center. I know you want me to touch on the center, but the center's <laughs> gone. That center was a man, I hear you laughing, was a main cog of that offense in terms of set and protection, run game, toughness, leadership. He was a bell cow of that group. When you wanted the ball being thrown and completed, and the play, you gave the ball to either Ladd McConkley or you got the ball to Brock Bowers. When those guys are gone with a bunch of other things going on, you have to replace them. I don't think I don't see those replacements coming right, at, right now. Carl, they're struggling on offense. But now let's go to defense, and let's talk about what they're missing on defense. Carl, they're missing the middle of that defense. They lost both of their safeties and their nickel last week. Now, when you're running Kirby's defense, the secondary makes a majority of the calls. And when they make the call, they set it. If that defense is ran from the back end to the front. When you are losing that much production and you have this, this many things going on within your organization and you're spending so much time away from football, at some point you're going to tell me, yeah, we can get locked in and play and the game is going to be the game and the head coach has to focus. Right now the head coach has been talking 162 times having team meetings, having policies. Instead of having policies, you should be having a game plan to develop your players. When you aren't developing your players and you're developing ways for them to get out of jail or stay in school or not get in trouble or DUIs and you're worried about Uber, Carl, I've said everything other than preparing for Kalen DeBoer, Steve Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin. You didn't hear none of that come out of my mouth yet. I'm just saying, just be on hand. And you can run it back. I know you're going to run it back. Run it back. Well, you, you, you don't have to say anything about preparing for Kalen DeBoer and Lane Kiffin and those guys because Kirby Smart has proven time and time again that he's mastered what's going on on the field. In addition to his two national titles that he's won as the head coach at Georgia, he was a part of four national championship teams as the defensive coordinator at your beloved University of Alabama. How dare you come on here and say that Georgia doesn't have – a team or they lost. You just argued down with me on our la on one of our earlier shows that the center didn't matter and that the center was the worst position in football. And now you're telling me that they're struggling from a production standpoint because they lost a center. Georgia 
doesn't have to replace guys. They just reload. They have gotten four and five stars to bear on their team. They have Carson Beck, who may be the number one quarterback taken in the draft next year. They have Dominic Lovett at wide receiver, who at one point was a leading receiver in the SEC coming from the University of Missouri. I don't understand where the hate is coming from. Well, yes, I do. But in the words of Robin Harris on Bay Bay's Kids Smoke, Georgia looks at recruiting in their roster saying this, we don't die, we multiply. There's no <laughs> shortage of talent in Athens, Georgia for the Bulldogs. <laughs>